amid a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Amid all the critical crises we faced in 2021 and the, and the measures we take to adapt to this new normalization, the Road Track Club of University of Moratua is here with you to bestow you another revolutionary storm for the best analytical minds in the country to stand up, team up, and brace up for a victory. So ladies and gentlemen, Sri Lanka's premier advanced analytics competition, Datastorm 2.0. Datastorm 2.0 advanced analytics competition organized by the Road Track Club of University of Moratua in collaboration with the Road Track Club of Faculty of Science, University of Colombo, powered by Octave, a giant in the field of big data analytics in Sri Lanka, is back for its second consecutive year. So this is a platform that provides a perfect opportunity for the undergraduates to engage with real world scenarios leveraging cutting edge advanced data analysis technologies, obtaining a massive learning experience to lead strategic and innovative solutions. So today you're here with us with the very first step of Data Store 2.0, the introductory webinar series. And today we will be having the very first webinar uh, so you, today you have the opportunity to learn masteries on how to get a grip on machine learning practices in data analytics. So before introducing the speaker, the resource person of today's session, I cordially invite the co-chair of DataStorm 2.0, Rotractor Yasit Randila Pereira, to give us a heads up about this significant project. Over to you, Yasit. Thank you, Charitma, uh, and I will grab this opportunity to welcome you all once again for the first introductory session of DataStorm 2.0. DataStorm 2.0, Sri Lanka's premier advanced analytics competition, is consisted of five phases, including two competition rounds. Out of the five phases, the first phase is an introductory webinar series, which is happening during these three days. Registration for the competition will start today at 9 p.m. A team should consist of a minimum of two members and a maximum of three members. Registrations can be done through our website. Then as the second phase, an exclusive webinar named Masterclass 1.0 will be conducted for all the registered teams, discussing the knowledge and the training required to tackle a case study. After that, the motivated storming round starts. Storming round will be an online round hosted on the Kaggle platform. Storming round will be conducted from the 11th of March to the 13th of March. And top 15 teams will be selected as the finalists. So for the finalists, we will be conducting another session named Masterclass 2.0, discussing the business aspects of data analysis, business reporting, and business pitching. And final round consists of two stages. The first stage is a case study. Top five teams of the case study will be selected for the second round to pitch their solutions live. The top three teams from the final round will be selected as winners and prizes will be awarded. Well, all these five phases, including the two competition rounds, will be conducted virtually, adapting to the new normalization. So I will invite all the participants to form your teams and register for the competition. All the best, everyone. Over to you, Charitma. Thank you, Asit Randila, for that introduction. So as I mentioned before, today's session will be conducted under the topic, get a grip on machine learning practices in data analytics. 
So now it is the time to introduce the speaker of today's session. So the speaker and the resource person tonight is Dr. Rajita Navaratna. Dr. Na Rajita Navaratna is a computer vision and data analytics researcher and developer with a focus on machine vision, machine vision applications, currently working as a principal data scientist at Octave, the John Kills Group, an advanced analytics center of excellence. His interests lie in large scale video analytics to understand human behavior using phases and gestures. His expertise is to analyze large scale video data in challenging lightning conditions to understand human behaviors. He has several years of experience as a researcher supervising undergraduate, master and PhD students, as well as collaborating with universities and industrial partners. We are really honored to have you with us, sir. So before moving on to the, today's session, I would like to remind you, during the session, we will put a slider link in the chat box. So if you have any questions, doubts regarding today's session and the topic, you can submit your questions there. So after the after the session, we will have a Q and A session. So there, I will direct your questions to the speaker, and you will get uh, the answers for your questions there. So without any further ado, I cordially invite our speaker, Dr. Rajita Navaratna, to commence today's session. Over to you, sir. Thanks, thanks, Charitma. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, Good evening, everyone. I hope uh, you're having a good good day and then uh, having a very interesting time too. And hopefully, you know, you are really interesting about uh, the Data Storm 2.0 and this is the uh, first session uh, of uh, the Data Storm 2.0. So let me share my screen first. Uh, Can you see my screen? Someone can. Can someone confirm? Maybe, uh... Yes, Rajiv, we can see. Okay, thanks. Okay, okay so. Good evening, everyone. So my name is uh, uh, Rajita Ravaratna. So I'm currently working as a principal data scientist at Octave John Chris Group. So we are. I work with uh, several data scientists. Uh, from a group of uh, more than 15 data scientists. And also I do work with a team of data engineers, visualization department, and also uh, delivery leads from, and also uh, from uh, different business units. So within uh, JKH, uh, I work with several uh, business domains. One is uh, retail. The second one I'm working with uh, beverages and also I work with the uh, insurance domain as well. So. We do plan to work in the hotel industry as well. So that uh, in your case, uh, there are several business units and Octave is the center of uh, data and advanced analytics where we support for different uh, business domains uh, within JKH to solve very interesting problems uh, using data. So before I join uh, Octave, uh, I'm a computer scientist. I work at uh, Walt Disney Imaginary at Los, in, in Los Angeles, United States. And before that, I, I, was, uh, I was worked in uh, Australia as well uh, from 2009. And I did my PhD in Australia uh, before I joined with uh, Disney. And in 2018, I worked with uh, Disney Research Zurich in Switzerland. Then I moved to Sri Lanka. Uh, and then now currently I'm working with uh, Octave. So this is a little bit of about my introduction and I do, uh, work as a data scientist and also a computer scientist and also work with uh, several university students, undergraduates, master students and PhD students as well in different research in computer vision and data analytics and data science. Um, okay, so let's, let's move on. Um, so this is the outline of this talk. So I will uh, talk about two parts. One is I will introduce a little bit of about the taste of artificial intelligence, so what it is. And during the second, uh, <coughs> Session, uh, uh, we'll try to deep, 
drive to understanding about the data and how we can tell a story and what is the machine learning pipeline that uh, data scientists and machine learning engineers are following. Okay. Uh, so this is the outline of my talk. So let's, let's jump in. Uh, so as humans, you, you can understand that we have the ability to learn. Right? So we, we also have the ability to communicate with uh, uh, different people in different languages as well. And also we do have emotions as well. Right? And also we can look into a different problems and uh, based on our experience, we, we, we are able to solve uh, some of the problems as well. So let's go through a couple of videos just to give a little bit of a taste about the human intelligence, but what we actually can do. So, so let's look at this video. So just basically there are two kids and try to understand the food called a lemon, right? So initially their mother tell that two children that you know, this is this is a lemon. And and uh, so the so the mother give a little bit of some inputs, right, to these two children. And at the later of this video, you can see that they, they try to uh, understand what is this particular food, and then you know they have some uh, like you know, uh, negative experience. That's not what they were expecting. So if you look at this data science and machine learning, so this is actually showing two accepts. One is, so initially, so the mother, their mother, they are, she's uh, introducing some uh, inputs and then uh, say that, you know, this is, this is my model. So this is called as a supervised learning. And at the later, so they, these people, they, uh, sorry, the kids, they try to understand this based on their behavior as well. So without without uh, having any input. So if you look at uh, another video. So you can see a person is trying to solve this puzzle, right? So there's a, a bunch of uh, uh, puzzles and then what she's trying to do is, uh, so she used this different, different puzzle pieces and try to uh, create, create the picture. So as a human, we have this ability to solve the problems. Too. So our brain is, is good enough where we can solve uh, different problems and also understand different, uh, different aspects of uh, intelligence of human intelligence, right? As I mentioned, learning, communications, and emotions. We do have you know, several emotions like you know, smile, anger, uh, hugging, kissing, so those kind of emotions. Uh, and also we, we, we can even uh, look into a particular problem and solve that particular problem as well. So if you look at artificial intelligence, what it's trying to do is, it's, it's try to mimic this human intelligence. So that's that's the field of artificial intelligence. So if you look at this particular field, uh, there are two uh, sub departments. So this artificial intelligence is it's not a new domain. So it was uh, exists from you know, 1950, but it started to you know, really kick off once we had the huge amount of data and uh, also the capability of you know, running these different algorithms and with the different uh, data resources. So within artificial intelligence, there's a field called machine learning. So machine learning, what you try to do is, is uh, use some certain amount of data and giving some inputs on some you know, human intelligence using those data and the computer try to learn from this data to understand different problems. Or for example, like, you know, based on some of the data, uh, the computer can understand some of the emotions. Like, you know, if you feed like, okay, these, these samples of images are smiles. So the computer can uh, understand when you give a new uh, smile image, just, okay, this, uh, this is a smile image, right? So it's pretty much uh, similar to uh, what you are learning a particular object. You know, right? Could be in your, in your university career, or just think about when you were really, really young, you know, when you're a kid. So you just try to understand different objects. So you play with different objects, and you know, you fail it, and you succeed after some some certain uh, attempts. So it's, uh, it's similar to what you try to do. 
So in around 2010, with the vast amount of data and the resources, there's another uh, area came to the field called deep learning, where you try to uh, understand uh, based on the neural networks. So for this type of uh, networks or models, you, you do need a vast amount of data to succeed. So heavily in the uh, image processing, computer vision, uh, speech recognition, those type of uh, unstructured data, uh, people are work heavily working on uh, this, this deep learning. So, so uh, today, we'll, let's go through some of the techniques and the pipeline in, uh, in, in machine learning. Okay. So before we jump into the pipeline, uh, so you need to understand why, why this particular field or particular uh, uh, area is really important in terms of business. So there are a few, uh, yeah, there are several, several benefits. So a uh, couple of benefits are, it actually help businesses to uh, uh, enhance the products, yeah, products or their services, right? And also it opened quite a bit of new areas to understand the new users, or maybe see whether we can target different new markets, or maybe like, you know, can we segment our customers in, in a particular uh, products or, or particular services? And also it help, helped you to save the time and also uh, save the money as well. So sometimes uh, you spend a heavy amount of dollar, dollar value to you know, uh, solve a particular problem, but based on uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, this type of things, it actually help uh, businesses to solve this particular problem using the data. And it helps uh, you to save uh, time and also the money. And uh, also, it sometimes it's also help you to uh, solve some of the unexpected problems too. So, you, uh, so assuming that you know this particular problem was exist, but it was not able to solve with uh, any uh, naive approaches. So, data science, machine learning, AI can help you to solve these type of problems, and you know, and uh, ultimately, it actually help businesses to take better decisions, right? Recommendation, you know, targeting different uh, uh, groups about your specific products or specific uh, services, those type of work. So there's a huge amount of you know, business value coming out and uh, this particular field is, you know, started to grow very rapidly in Sri Lanka as well. Where a lot of businesses try to uh, move to use of data science and machine learning and AI for some of the businesses to solve. So if you look at this AI and data science, uh, so one of the most important thing is is the data. So I'll jump into the, some of the sessions in, in the data of this talk. So if you look at the data, uh, there are two types of data. One is the structured data. So mostly you work with you know, CSV files, Excel files. And uh, the other one is the unstructured data where you work with the images and also the text analytics and uh, speech type of data. So uh, data is the most important, important aspect of uh, this machine learning pipeline. So let's jump into the machine learning pipeline. Uh, and then uh, I'll go through uh, different stages of this, uh, this roadmap and uh, how, how we can solve different, different things uh, in this, uh, particular steps. So first step, before we move to the uh, first step, sorry, uh, let's look at some of the examples that we can do with the machine learning data science. So there are three, three types of uh, main areas uh, where you know, people are trying to solve different, different problems. One is uh, supervised learning, where you try to use classification problem. You know, can, can we classify uh, different images? Well, right? And the regression type of problems, can you demand something? You know, can you forecast something? And unsupervised problem, unsupervised learnings, where you wanted to you know, uh, cluster different uh, customers, for example, your customer base in, in a particular business, you want to identify who are the premium customers. So and uh, you can target specific specific business interventions for these particular customers. So uh, you can work with unsupervised learning and also reinforcement learning as well. So within each category, uh, I have highlighted several uh, amount of work that you can do. Uh, uh, for example, classifications like the fraud detection, image classification, customer retention. Like it's a uh, you know, it's a heavy top area where retail businesses are working on, and many other businesses as well. Um, so these are some of the, the things that we can do uh, with, with machine learning. So uh, how do we solve this, this problem? So in order to un solve this you know, image, uh, or, uh, sorry, uh, machine learning problems, we need to go through uh, certain steps of this machine learning framework. So let's jump to the machine learning part line. 
So the first step is actually start with the, the business problem or the machine learning problem. That, that, that's the first step. Okay. It's pretty obvious that uh, you should have a, like a problem to solve. So there are certain uh, type of uh, requirements in this particular stage. So the first question normally businesses ask from data scientists or, uh, is what, and also data scientists in, involved with these business discussions as well. What are the, the top questions that you want to solve using machine learning or data science? Okay, so you heavily spend quite a bit of time brainstorming like, with the businesses and also with the, with the data scientists to understand what are the problems we want to solve from using machine learning. And the second question, oh, this is not the one to two, but there are quite a bit of questions, uh, but these are like top questions. So the second question um, uh, we wanted to understand is whether we have the correct data and the enough data as well. So the, in, in here, the correct data is, so uh, if you are trying to solve a problem using images, you need to have image data. Right? So if you have like uh, CSV data or like you know, speech data, and the problem you are trying to do is with uh, image data, so then uh, you cannot solve that particular problem. And also whether we need to understand whether we have enough data too. So how many data points we have to solve this particular problem? So if we have like, you know, these five data points is good enough or whether we need to have 500 data points or whether we should collect more data. Like, do we have the resources to collect more data? Do we have a data analytics teams? Do we have a research assist, uh, assistant team to collect this data? And can you go and collect data by yourself too? One of the area that most of the data scientists uh, are not wanted to touch it is they don't want to go and collect the data. That's one of the uh, important stages that you need to spend quite a bit of time to uh, collect this data and understand the problem from the beginning. From the beginning. So once you start to collect the data, you can understand what are the problems and uh, how are we going to collect the data. So you need to spend quite a bit of time actually in this particular area as well. And uh, how, how can we design some of the test cases too? which actually solve that, that particular business problem. Do we have to do a pilot, a pilot run? We are, you know, uh, use some A-B testings and uh, those kind of uh, decisions. Do we have money to do those things? So there are quite a bit of uh, uh, problem solving sessions going on, um, especially in this particular step. And the most important question is, do we really need AI machine learning to solve this business problem? That's the most important questions you want to uh, understand. If you the answer is no, you really don't need to go after data science and machine learning. So uh, some of the questions that you might can get the answer, just asking from some of the uh, customers, you know, like you can do like a uh, question and answer type of uh, uh, behavior type of uh, uh, research and then get the answers too. So you need to understand like, you know, do we really need AI machine learning to solve this business problem? So that's the, that's the most important questions you should ask from the businesses because it, it, it uh, comes with the cost, okay? So if you look at this business uh, requirement, so if the, if the answer is yes, so there are uh, different uh, stages that you need to think about. One is, what is the time? You know, how long is a particular project? And also do we have enough time to deliver this project to? Okay, so if, if, you want, if you want to solve a particular problem using machine learning and uh, find, say, okay, I need to, you know, have the answers within a week, you need to understand that for, uh, from the businesses and also you need, the data scientist team you need to uh, understand whether you have enough time to solve that problem. And also you, you need to understand the stakeholders too, who are the stakeholders for this, this project. And also whether you have money, sometimes you might have to hire a, a data scientist or you might ha have a different resources as well. So it comes with the cost too. So you need to understand whether you have money to solve this problem. And also you have the commitment and the, uh, and the relevant people, you, whether you have uh, uh, people who know to, how to solve these uh, machine learning problems and who know this particular business domains as well. So you need to understand uh, whether you have uh, the relevant people as well in, in your team before you do any, any commitment to. So these are some of the needs that you really need to go after uh, once, you start, uh, once you say, okay, I have a, a problem that I need to solve using uh, machine. So there are several bottlenecks too. So when you started to work with a machine learning or a data science, so the, all these things you, you need to uh, you know answer within the first steps. 
So one is so you need to understand whether you have the data. So as I mentioned, like whether you have the data, whether you have uh, uh, so a team commitment, uh, and also the time. It's pretty similar to what I mentioned earlier. So these are some of the bottlenecks as well. Okay, and also like whether you have the resources as well. Are you going after like how a solution? If you are not, do you have your own servers, clusters, and these kind of resources? GPUs, uh, whether you have, can you run those uh, models in your, in your own machines, uh, or what is the security, what type of security you need. So these type of uh, questions you need to really understand, especially in, in, in these particular issues. So I, I'm just uh, showing these things in a very simpler way so you can understand you know, how you wanted to go after this particular pipeline uh, and what are the questions you, you really need to look into. So once you identify all these all these all these uh, answers for all the questions and what are the, and all the resources and the people and time, so let's say you are you are good to go. Then the sec second step is we are going after the data. So this this the data is the most important uh, important uh, stage in, in this uh, machine learning pipeline. So as, as I mentioned earlier, so there are different type of uh, data sets. One is the structured data. So you might work with like uh, CSV data or Excel, Excel data. Yeah, the data is you know pretty much clean and then it's given to you. Okay. So data engineering team or someone is uh, you know polishing this data and it's, it's given to data science team and so they can just start to work. Okay. And there are some data types uh, like images, speech data, text data, where they are pretty much unstructured data. So if you look at the images, if you say like you know, 100 by 100 image, you have uh, 10,000 pixels, right? so it's, 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 a, it's a vector. So you can, uh, you have 100 by 100 uh, matrix, so you can convert into a vector. So it's a, wow, thousand, sorry, uh, 10,000 to one vector. So that's, that's, that's the data point you have for one particular single image, right? So just imagine that uh, if you have uh, 1 million of um, images, how much of data points you have, right? So there's a huge amount of data points you need to understand, and these are like numbers. So. How, how can you tell a story just based on these numbers in, in image? So if you look at like a, a image of a faces, let's assume that you have a problem that you need to solve uh, using images where uh, you need to understand whether given image is uh, cat or dog. So you need to understand how can we derive different features where it actually tell you this particular images or this particular features are representing a cat and this particular features are representing a dog. So based on these pixels, right, pixel values. So that's a different uh, um, different step of data science. We have called uh, pitch engineering. So you need to understand what type of data. Right? It's one is instructed data, other one is unstructured data. Also. So most of the data scientists, they spend quite a bit of heavy time understanding this data. So be before we, you know, Jump in with with uh, with your problem, so you, you understand what type of uh, data you you have. Okay, so you, let's assume that uh, you, your problem is going after the image data. So, okay, so this is uh, so you understood uh, the problem need image data. Then try to understand uh, what do you really have. Okay, so just look at uh, uh, your business domains or maybe uh, uh, wherever you work, and even in your um, university. Uh, in university uh, courses as well, whether you have enough data, okay? So if you don't have enough data, you need to understand how, how can we gather more data? So one is, okay, maybe you can look into some public data sets. Okay? Uh, you can just Google it and see whether, the, whether you have uh, enough data points uh, to understand your, your problem, right? Uh, so you can, uh, you can really work on the understanding, gather more data through internet too. Still, if the answer is no, then you might have to spend some time to develop some system to collect the, collect your own data sets too. Okay. For example, let's say you wanted to uh, uh, develop a model where you want to understand some birds in Sri Lanka, okay. or you want to create a, like app or a, a mobile app where you, you take a picture of a you know, bird and then you know, it will say like what type of bird and where it is and some history as well. So if you look it in the Google, you might not be able to understand, uh, you might not be able to find uh, birds in Sri Lanka. So you know, this is a very unique problem, Sri Lanka. So then you need to have courage 
you go and collect your own data sets too. I think you cannot like just wait until someone needs to meet you. So you need to have a desire where you can go and collect collect your own data sets. Right? So this is that's very interesting too. So you need a, a very interesting way of approaching this this problem. Uh, so once you uh, identify the answers for all these two questions, that you know, you you try to you know collect collect the data. So you you take a let's say a camera and then you go and you take the pictures and then you, you so uh, collect more data. So that's pretty much like the, the uh, data. So data uh, step. So that's the, the second step. So once you, you know, collect the data, so let's assume that you, you have data sets like this. So let's assume that you are working with uh, structured data. So somehow you uh, you collect some data where you know uh, row is a number of samples and the columns is now some features, right? So, so feature one, feature B. So maybe P, B might be like country, you know, France, England, Sri Lanka, like. So maybe feature D is uh, uh, maybe product. It's about whether this is a small or large or medium or so. Uh, saying, uh, what is the what is the volume product? So you get a bunch of you know, so if you look at this particular table, it's very difficult to understand. So as a first step, what we have to do is we need to uh, do some visualization. Okay. So the first one is uh, where you take different features and then you try to visualize. So one is you can uh, draw some histograms and see like whether they are having a like left skew diagrams, right skew diagrams or bell curves diagrams. So just to understand uh, how the distribution is for this particular particular uh, feature. So you take you know, feature one and then uh, draw the history. So you can see like uh, what is the distribution. And then uh, most important thing, as I mentioned, is the visualization. You make sure once you get the structured data, so spend quite a bit of time to visualize this data. So it's very difficult to look at this particular data set and you know, come up with uh, some interesting uh, interesting patterns. But if you look, if you visualize, you can really understand uh, very interesting things just look, just by visualization. If, for example, like if you look at this particular feature, you can understand like uh, 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 most of the the data points somewhere in here. So, and you, you can even like you know, for example, like uh, look at the quality of the data too. How many samples you have? You know, for example, like the, if you look at the feature E, the number of observations are pretty low. So these kind of insights you, you can get. So this type of exploratory data will definitely uh, require you to uh, solve the first data storm uh, masterclass 1.0 question. So uh, you can uh, spend quite a bit of time uh, exploring the data too. So, so just look simple uh, bar chart will help you to understand like how many data points you have for different uh, features. And also if you look at uh, another feature, for example, I'm just in here, uh, try to uh, visualize the feature here. So here in X axis, we have the, the samples and the Y axis, we have the value. Okay. So if you look at this particular visualization, for the sample nine, the, the value for the sample nine is 0.8 and compared to the, the rest of the data points. So, so the rest of the data points, you can see that they are pretty much varying between zero to 0 to 0.2. Uh, but in the sample nine, you can see like it's, there's a huge variation. So you can assume that even this, the sample nine is a like outline. So just simple uh, you know, visualization will help you to understand so, uh, some of the questions, like you know, what are the out outliers, and also you need to understand once you identify these outliers, what what you can do. Maybe you can just remove this sample night complete, right? Or like uh, um, in any other techniques that you can do to to make sure that we have a, like a uniform distribution. So uh, these type of techniques, but simple technique might be to use just to remove the, the outlier. Right? Um, and also, I'm um, uh, visualizing another feature, feature H. 
So if you look at this feature H, you can see for the sample seven and sample 10, you do not have any, any, any numbers. For the sample nine, you can see that the value is 0.8. Uh, so you can see the sample nine might be an account life, but if you look at the sample seven and the sample 10, you, you do not have any, any data points. So what shall we do with this uh, when you have missing data? So there are different techniques that you can do to uh, understand, maybe understand the value for the sample, sample seven and sample eight, 10. So one technique is uh, you can uh, look into the, the distribution of the other data points and maybe you can just uh, calculate the mean or maybe you can go after the median and then assume that sample seven value is uh, equal to the uh, average of the rest of the data points or median of the data points. So it's, most of these decisions will take based on the, the applications, but uh, in, uh, you can just uh, try with uh, using library. Or you can just completely remove this sample seven and sample 10. Okay, so you, you can completely remove them too because you don't have enough data points. But uh, you, you need to think about how many, how many samples points you, you have to before you start to completely remove it. Uh, just to make sure that you know it is not going to affect heavily for the entire entire data population as well. So these type of things definitely will you know, come handy when you started to work uh, with your first product. Okay. So as I mentioned, the most important thing is the data. So once you have huge amount of data, what you can do is based on this data, you can do heavy analytics, right? So you can do like a uh, visualization, uh, exploratory data analytics, like what, what I have done here. Like, you know, these are like exploratory data analytics. So yeah, you use the data points, the existing data points, and then you visualize and then understand uh, the variation of the data, understand what are the missing samples and what are the outliers, those type of questions. Right? So once you do, uh, you can do quite a bit of analytics. And once you do analytics, what actually help in, in, uh, to the business is, it actually helps to understand about their products. Once you understand the products, it's actually connected to the users. Okay, maybe we can do quite a bit of interventions uh, targeting different users. So, uh, so and then, uh, or maybe we can even like, you know, uh, attract a, a different population as, as well, a different uh, uh, customer segment, for example, for our users. So we can have more users. The more users actually create more data. Okay. More data create better analytics. Better analytics create better products and better products create more resources and just keep going. So this is called the flywheel of data. Um, so it's, uh, that's the most important stage of this, this pipeline and quite a bit of people are uh, including data scientists and also data engineers spend the heavy time on this, this area. Okay, so as, just to take away, uh, so the key to successful AI and machine learning model is the quality of the data. So you really need to go after the data and every problem is very unique, okay? So every problem is unique. So, and you might work uh, with the very unique data, data points, but if you look at the concept might be same, you know, for example, like you, you want to understand uh, custom segmentation, or maybe you want to understand uh, churn retention, or maybe you want to understand uh, different marketing strategies. So the concept might be the same, but the data points and the way you are going to uh, use data to solve the business problem might be very unique. So just a, a takeaway, uh, most important uh, thing is the data. And also you need to spend quite a bit of time uh, in exploratory data, data analytics as well. So this type of techniques will definitely help you for your problem solving in the data storm. Sorry, master class part for zero. Okay, let's move on. Uh, so once you, you know, do quite a bit of data processing, so the next step is uh, uh, is a feature engineering. So what in feature engineering, what it does is, so you, you have your own our features, right? So where are you, this particular feature, this table, right? So you can use this particular uh, data, uh, data uh, points and then uh, you can uh, develop some models. Or you may have to come up with different uh, ways of representing this data too. Maybe instead of just looking at the raw data, 
I might can use the hit, the variation of this data point for a particular feature. Right? Maybe I can just use the histogram. So you need to uh, spend quite a bit of time uh, about the feature engineering as well. So especially in, when you look, talk when you work with the image data, especially in the computer vision uh, type of uh, work, where you have to heavily work with the feature engineering tasks. Like so, you have like pixel values. So you need to take a, like image. Um, it's basically one. Uh, let's say you have a hundred by hundred image, basically a 10,000 10, by one vector. So each pixel value can take a number between zero and two hundred and fifty five. Okay, so on based on this data, you need to uh, find out a representation for your particular problem. So the problem I was uh, initially talking about, like understanding the cat and dog. So you, based on these pixels values, can you just uh, understand the representation for the uh, cat and dog? Or maybe you might have to use different uh, pitch engineering techniques as well. Okay, you might have to convert these pixels into a different domain where you can use the features in that particular domain to understand uh, what is a cat or what is a dog. Okay? So this is a very heavy area that uh, most of the data scientists are spending quite a bit of time in, in, in their work. So once you, you know, understand these features and then uh, you spend quite a bit of time about uh, the feature engineering, then you are pretty much ready to go with your model. So then uh, here you need to understand uh, what are the algorithms that you are going to use? So if you look at uh, some of the algorithms uh, like you know, supervised learning or unsupervised learning, so the, here you need to understand what is the, your problem that you are going to um, do. So you have a business problem, so then you convert into a machine learning problem, and then you understand uh, whether this particular problem is a supervised learning or unsupervised learning or a reinforcement learning problem. So then you need to understand what type of uh, tools and algorithms, and even like the programming languages to use. Sometimes some business units might you know, work with R for example, or Matlab, or some business units might work with Python. So you need to understand uh, these different requirements, so including the programming languages as well, or with the, what type of uh, cloud-based solution you want. You know, some some uh, companies, they work with Azure, some companies work with uh, AWS, some com companies, you know, they work with their own type of platforms as well. So you need to spend quite a bit of time to understand these algorithms and tools. So you brainstorm uh, heavily with your team too. So the, uh, with your data scientist team uh, and also the business teams. As well. And as I mentioned earlier, like, you know, every use case is unique. So every use case is unique. So you, it's, it's a new problem. Okay, every day you try to solve a new problem. And one of the main question you wanted to answer is whether you can use some of the off the shell uh, models or off the shell tools to at least uh, partially uh, solve your problem. Okay, so uh, you may need to do quite a bit of research in, in this particular area too, whether uh, you want to create your own tools or models or whether you can use some of the existing uh, models and maybe retweak those models in a way that it can uh, answer you, your business problem or your, your problem. So uh, before you, know, you need to spend some time in this uh, area, especially in these discussions, like you know, do we need to create our own models or can you use existing models? So these type of questions you need to answer from your team and also uh, with the uh, data engineering and also the visualization team too. So, so in terms of the evaluation where, you know, once you, you know, listen, Assume that you know you you have to create a model. So once you create a model, you need to understand the accuracy. How how are you going to calculate the accuracy? So some some techniques are like you, know, you can go after the accuracy, class accuracy, or maybe like you know, precision recall, F1 score, uh, RMEC error. You know, especially if you are working with regression type of problem. So you need you you can use uh, uh, this type of uh, performance as well. So when you do the evaluation, you need to understand three three areas. One is the time. The second one is the money, and the third one is the performance. So sometimes, uh, if you want to get like very very higher performance, you your models might need to run several weeks or maybe uh, several uh, days. It's it's basically it's depend on the the problem, but you might not have time to so uh, train the model. For example, let's assume you, you come up with a model and then you want to 
training. So then um, when you start to train the model, it, it looks like it takes around seven days, but uh, the business, they need, they need an answer within three days. So then like, okay, you, what is the, the, the trade off that you want to do? So you also need to understand the money too. So in order to like, you know, train these type of models, it, it, it costs a lot it, uh, in terms of human resources and also the, uh, food and also the data resources as well. Uh, and also it, it's, it also uh, costs for some of the GPU uh, resources as well. Or if you are working in the cloud, it might cost you uh, your, uh, your, uh, your cluster usages as well. So you need, really need to think about like these uh, three areas, like when are you going to stop it? Uh, time, money, and performance. So this, uh, so it's not only just go after like, you know, understanding the, not only, not to get 100% accuracy. So you need to think about like these three areas and uh, understand the trade-offs too, okay? So as a good practice, maybe you can just start with like a baseline model and see whether you can solve your, your problem in a certain way. And then uh, you just reiterate. So this machine learning or data science pipeline is not like you know, one to seven steps. So it's, it's an iterative process. So, so you keep iterating. Uh, so that's basically about uh, the model training and evolution. And then uh, once you do this model evaluations, so then it actually help you to understand some of the, the business problems that you had. Okay. So in here in this particular uh, steps, you are really looking after these uh, uh, outputs. Okay. One question, there are several questions that you need to understand. Are we happy with the key findings in here? Are you happy with the performance? Okay, or do we really need to uh, re retrain the model? Or do we really need to have more data? So these type of questions you need to answer. Right? And uh, did you discover any key, any key features? Like did you find any interesting, any interesting thing from the, the structured data you had, right? So, um, so these type of questions and also like, you know, did, did this particular model solve this? business problem as well. And if it is not for how extent, and what are the areas we need to uh, uh, improve? Oh, otherwise you may have to go go back again and then you may have to uh, uh, re-evaluate the problem too. Okay, so then you identify what are the limitations that you can do with uh, machine learning or data, data science. Oh, what are, uh, what are the bottlenecks? So these things uh, you will heavily find out this particular step. So then you go back again to the step step one and step two, you 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 know, you, you, you keep iterating the process and you know, keep try to improve the, improve your problem. And uh, some of these experimental satisfactions are like, you know, uh, did you find some of the actions too? For example, like uh, if you wanted to target different customers segments and your problem is to segment different customers. So let's assume that you know you are working in a retail retail domain where you have one million customers and you need to understand. Who are the most important customers uh, in, in your business? So they, you are trying to group it, right? So once you find out these groups, what are the interventions you want to do? So that's the value comes. It's not from the segmentation. So you need to understand the business value too. Okay, it's not about uh, getting a hundred percent accurate model. What are the, the business interventions you can do? Right. So uh, these are the things uh, you you want to understand about uh, the experimental satisfactions. Uh, and you know it, it actually helped you to uh, get better get uh, better decisions right uh, for your for your business problem so once you have you know, better decisions sometimes it actually must uh, help you to automate the systems too okay so there might be some problems that uh, you may need uh, quite a bit of human to solve this problem so if you look at this AI machine learning and uh, these these uh, areas will help you to automate uh, some of the systems, or sometimes it actually help you to uh, partially automate. Too. So you might not be able to fully automate, uh, but uh, it might need a human in the loop. But it actually is solve uh, to partially uh, um, partially solve that problem, right? And also. It, helps you to understand uh, different uh, other areas as well within that particular business problem. 
So maybe you might come up with new problems to solve with the machine learning and solve with the data. And you can come up with like, okay, these are the type of data that we really need to answer, uh, answer this particular problem. So then you go back and then talk with the business or talk with the business requirements, say that, hey, uh, I do need like you know, X type of data points and we do not have this type of data points. Maybe like, you know, you should think about it to collect this data. Then you have another, you know, another conversation like, you know, how are we going to gather this type of data? Like, you know, so there's a huge process going on uh, in, in machine learning and data sciences. Data science is not about just the modeling. Okay? So the modeling is just like 10%, uh, if you look at the data science uh, pipeline. And as a data scientist, um, you heavily work with the data engineers, you heavily work with uh, business people, business analytics, data analytics, and also you work with the visualization team too. So once you identify like uh, uh, some of these uh, decisions, most important stage is like, how are you going to communicate these things for that uh, top executives or presidency in your company, right? So how are you going to you know, uh, take these you know, complex machine learning or complex data science uh, outputs and convert in, into a way that the top management can understand this particular data set and they can understand what are the uh, business interventions that we can do. So this type of you know, uh, visualizations uh, is really, really important and, and it's actually one uh, entire complete domain uh, in data science, uh, data science pipeline. So there are, there are visualization experts actually, they are heavily only working on a data, science, a data science visualization. So they are also part of data science platforms. So if you look at this da complete data science uh, uh, room, uh, we have data engineers, as I mentioned, we have uh, data scientists, we have visualization analytics, we have delivery leads. Uh, so there's a huge amount of people. We, sometimes we have like a cloud, cloud managers, platform engineers. So uh, if you are working with uh, like uh, uh, cloud platforms, we also need to think about the security, data security, and how are we going to track the models, model drifting. So there's a huge areas. So and uh, in terms of the job titles, there are several uh, job titles too. Okay? In machine learning areas now. So you can be a visualization expert. So you are only heavily working on this type of visualizations. There are some tools like Power BI, ClickSense, and Tableau uh, to, you can use to do the uh, visualization. And most of the data scientists also work with uh, this type of visualization as well. And or you can use uh, Python and R to, to do some simple visualization as well and uh, data engineers and platform engineers. So this is a huge area section. If you wanted to jump into like data science and machine learning areas, data scientist is not the only title you have. Okay. There are other, other, uh, uh, other jobs that are really interesting uh, in this particular uh, entire, entire pipeline. But as a data scientist, uh, it's worth to at least to you know, understand how you can communicate some of the findings you, you, uh, you found from your, your business problem. How you want to communicate, and also it has to be simple. It has to be straight. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, like if possible, you also need to understand what are the trade-offs. For example, if you in, in this particular uh, chart, uh, I'm showing uh, like some kind of like a, uh, what do you call this trade-off curves. Maybe like you know, let's assume this is like the money you spend, and this is like uh, let's say outcome. You know? So the, it it. The, uh, if the excess is in, in dollar values, if you say if you spend like you know, ten million dollars, you can uh, get like you know hundred customers, for example. If you spend like you know uh, eighty million uh, eighty million dollars, you can get around like ninety customers. Uh, let's say for a new product, so you can see like you know uh, twenty dollar sorry twenty million dollar difference. It's actually you know costing 10, 10 people. So then you need to understand like whether you should put this twenty million dollars. To get these ten customers, okay. if you are really working in a, like a very heavy uh, or very unique uh, business problem, maybe these ten people might be very useful too. Okay. So you need to really understand these type of things to understand you know, uh, where, where the, these key points. Okay. So if you give this type of charts, it actually help for the businesses to understand and take better decisions. So all these these decisions actually connected to the entire pipeline again. Once you come up with the, the better decisions, it actually help you to you know, um, understand uh, new problems or maybe actually help you to understand new areas. What are the new areas we need to 
focus to collect new data. Actually, new uh, collection data actually it helps you to work uh, with the data processing stuff. More data processing it connect to the feature engineer. Feature engineer connection to the model training and training including the satisfaction. And, uh, you look at the performance and stuff. And again, based on this, you can take uh, decisions too. Okay, and then keep going. So this is uh, like uh, it's, it's it's a uh, uh, iterative process. So in your problem uh, that you want to do, solve in Masterclass 1.0, so you have to work with all these stages, okay? So you need to look into the data. You need to spend quite a bit of time to understand this data. You might have to do a lot of exploratory data analytics. You need to do a lot of data processing tasks. Then you may have to come up with different features, right? So how are we going to convert different data points into different features where you can use those features with different models, right? You need to understand what type of algorithms you need to use, what type of platforms you want to use, and and, uh, and also you need to understand the time and the cost. For example, I you know Masterclass 1.0, you have only three days, so that's a that's a one bottleneck you have. So you cannot have a model where it runs for five five days. You, you cannot submit, right? So that's a one trade-off. Okay, so when are you going to stop? So these are questions you need to you need to uh, you need to uh, Ask from your team, okay? and then uh, model satisfactions, and also the model training evaluation that will comes to the decisions. So, okay, so I'll, uh, that's a, a brief introduction about uh, ML pipeline, and these are the steps. Hopefully, you, know, you guys got quite a bit of information about uh, the steps. So I create this uh, slide deck so it, focusing that you guys can easily understand what is this pipeline. So before I just wind up, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, some of the skill sets that you, you, you need and then uh, some of the recommendations. Uh, it actually helps you a lot. So as a data scientist, uh, there are three areas. One is you need to work in the computer science where the programming uh, languages. And the second one is the mathematics and the statistics. So in here, you may have to work with statistics, statistical inferences, different uh, statistical uh, Algorithms, for example, uh, let's say what do you call this? Uh, I squared. You know, uh, there are different algorithms, like the uh, algorithms. There's a bunch of algorithms, and also you need to understand the business knowledge as well. So data science basically comes in this particular area. We are a data scientist. You need to understand the computer science, or the, or she needs to have skill set of programming, yeah? programming in Python or R or MATLAB or SAS, uh, uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, that there's a bunch of uh, tools and techniques. And you need to have quite a bit of in, uh, good knowledge in statistics, mathematics, especially this uh, one good area where uh, pure mathematics and applied mathematics come to play. Uh, you, know, you might have to work with uh, matrix derivatives, matrix representation, vector representation, these vector derivatives, matrix derivatives. There's, there's a huge uh, pure mathematics area as well. And also you need to understand the businesses too. You know? So the, the, the value of a data science comes from mostly from here. Right? If it is not generating any impact or business value, uh, so you, your project might be delayed, okay? Because it's ultimately it's not delivering anything for the businesses. So you might have a model where it's basically very complex and it's gives, let's say 100% accuracy, but uh, it might not, uh, uh, useful for the business. You might have a model with like 70% accuracy and it's very simple to explain too. And, it, it, and also it's, it's easy to explain for your operational team too. Might be uh, the business will go after that particular model too. So it's uh, so in data science, the accuracy is not, not, not the only factor you, know, you need to look into. Okay. So these are some of the skills you do, you do need as a data scientist. So there are so another area is popping in, in uh, data science too, which is called AI quality engineering. I think uh, QA engineering is a little bit common in software engineering uh, field. So yeah, we have QA engineers too, but uh, AI QA, QA is a topic, that's a new topic that's going to be in, in uh, data science and machine learning industry as well. So, and also some of the, the skills are going to be overlap as well. So there are three three areas. One is the education, testing skills, and the uh, hard skills. 
So if you uh, deep down of uh, all these areas, for example, let's say education, as Shan mentioned, you need to have quite a bit of information about the mathematics too. Uh, and social science, psychology, informatics, and in terms of the hard skills, you may need like programming skills, Python, R, uh, Octave, MATLAB, PyTorch, uh, uh, other deep, if you're working in like deep neural networks, uh, TensorFlow, these kind of tools, and also the storage, you know, Mongo database, SQL, this type of stuff. And also when you work with the testings as a QA, a QA engineer, you may have to understand about the techniques, like what is A-B testing, what is the validation technique, model validation, how do you do those things? What are the existing tools? You may have to master these things. And also some of the machine learning frameworks as well, like scikit-learn, namely PyTorch, TensorFlow. And if you are working with like Azure, you might have to work with databricks, you know, and uh, those type of the type of frameworks too. So these are some of the, the, the frameworks, uh, skill sets that you, you do need. So some of the skills you do need as a data scientist as well, but in this particular area, it might be really interesting uh, if you wanted to work as a QA engineer in uh, AI and machine learning uh, domain as well. So that's a, that's a new new area, uh, actually interesting uh, to work on. So the, here are a couple of books and some uh, recommendations might be helpful for you. Uh, like pattern recognition and machine learning, this uh, is a very heavy pure mathematics uh, book. It's, it's really interesting. And this book actually helps you to understand some of the techniques uh, you can use in data science. So, so there are several books and, and also always use the online courses as well. All the data scientists are, they use these online courses to enhance their, their knowledge too. You know, every day you are learning new things. So this is a very interesting, uh, interesting field. And, uh, um, as I mentioned, uh, you know, spend some time with the uh, Kosula, Udami, and you also spend some time with YouTube too. So you can understand like similar problems uh, people ask or solve. So, uh, um, so these are some of the recommendations. And also in terms of the QA side, uh, there are some courses as well in uh, Udami called Artificial Intelligence in Software Testing. Uh, if, you, if you want to be uh, like a QA engineer in software engineering side, you might be also good to think about uh, to be a QA engineer in artificial intelligence as well. So that's that's a new area. Too. So the, um, yeah. So just to be wind up. So I just we were discussing some of the the techniques about uh, machine learning pipeline, which hopefully to come to play in, in your first problem to solve, and also some of the resources and skill sets. And as a data science, you know, machine learning uh, area. Data scientist is the, not the only only job you can go after. There are several jobs uh, you can go after, as I mentioned earlier, like data engineering, where they heavily work on ETL type of work, and data scientists, machine learning engineer. So machine learning engineers are more heavily like uh, pure mathematics, so they are looking, really looking after the modeling type of work. And uh, visualizations people, you know, they are really looking after like you know, once you do all this data science and uh, machine learning work, like you come up with all these you know, very interesting things and you need to visualize these things for the businesses they can you know, get uh, quite, uh, some insights so how we are going to use this visualization so that's a that's a different area that people are spending quite a bit of the time to um, and uh, then AIQ engineers uh, that's a that's a area that uh, you can work on data analytics business analytics uh, so those uh, business and analytics so those are some of the, the positions that you can work on this, this machine learning and data science domain. Yeah, thank you so, so much. And uh, that's the end of my talk. Uh, hopefully, you know, it helped you to understand quite a bit of information uh, about this uh, machine learning and data science uh, framework, which might be very handy for your uh, master plus 1.0, where you have to solve uh, one problem within a three days. Okay. So you, as I mentioned earlier, you think about that now you have a limitation of three days, okay? So think about uh, when you get that problem, like how you want to solve it. And uh, if you do need any, any help or anything, uh, just shoot me an email too, I'm happy to uh, guide you all. Okay, thank you so much. Dishan, it's all to you. Or Charitma, it's all to you. 
Thank you so much, sir, for that insightful presentation. And uh, our participants have sent us a few questions. So now I think we can move on to the Q&A session. So the first question is, does visualization mean expressing data using graphs? Uh, visualization means, yes, that, that's, that's, that's a one, one thing. So the, if you look at this visualization uh, field, so you can work with you know, different bar charts, you know, different line charts, uh, but that's the one way of you know, uh, doing that. But when you get this business problem, you need to subdivide this visualization uh, task. What are the things you need to show? What are the, the summary things that you need to show to the, uh, the top, top businesses? Like this, assume that they can spend like two minutes. What are the main things you want to highlight? So you cannot complicate the uh, visualization too. So you divide this visualization tools into like several uh, different views. We are maybe one first view, the simple view, it's only show the, the final numbers or the impact. So this particular use case will give you 10 million impact. That's it. So that's the one, 10 million is the one, one visualization. So that's the summary page. So then you can go up to like an overview page. We are showing a little bit of about this uh, KPIs and those type of and then you deal deeper about uh, the features and also like uh, and the variations of these different uh, business insights. So take the problem and then divide it into some problems and try to solve some problem. And also uh, when you work on the visualization, uh, uh, visualization, make sure you have an overview page too. Yeah, that's the most important thing that we are most of the top executives uh, can going to look at it. Just think about. If the top executive has only one minute, what is the most important thing you want to show? Just think, think about it in that way and then uh, divide the problem into some, some problems and then try to visualize it. So definitely you will need like, you know, charts too. And also you need to think about like, what are the color scheme too? How are you going to select the colors, right? That's a different whole area like, you know, uh, can I use green color or yellow color? Like that's a, so maybe like, if, it feels like uh, these two, two different colors, but you need to spend quite a bit of time to uh, argue with these different color schemes too. You know, that, that's, a, that's a whole uh, learning learning curve. And whether you should use pie chart or whether you should uh, bar chart too. Like whether pie chart actually you know, representing what you want to do show. So sometimes uh, people try to avoid the, these pie charts type of things uh, because it's not really you know, uh, giving some of the values, but it's depending on the application. Too. But think about like you know, charts. So think about the problem. So initially think about the problem, subdivide the problem, and then make sure you have an overview page where you show the impact. Then also think about the color scheme, what type of colors you want to use it for the, the, the visualization. And that's the thing you are going to show to the top, top executives, right? All this, the data or structured data or the unstructured data that you worked on, and you come up to one particular data point. And this is the impact. You are going to get from this particular business problem and you need to show this number right that's it that's pretty much it also um, but uh, you also need to think about like what they expected too so you need to think about like how are you going to visualize this you know, important important piece of piece of information too so think about the color scheme think about it uh, the the chart types you, you want to do you want to have it you know whether you should go up line chart bar chart or uh, pie chart and those types of things yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. The second, uh, second question is, uh, what is the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning? Yes, so if you look at the supervised learning algorithms, as I mentioned earlier, someone need to, to, to tell you like, what, it, what is this is. For example, like in, uh, let's assume uh, you are trying to uh, teach uh, teach uh, a kid try to understand the apple, for example. Right? So this particular kid doesn't have a, any idea what, what is this particular food is. Right? So you you provide quite a bit of example, like okay, this is a red apple, this is a green apple. So you provide uh, different variations of you know, type of apples, and also give like some balls too, like okay, this is not an apple. So you give some positive examples too, and you also give some negative examples. So then uh, you teach. Kid, you know, this is this is the apple, and this is not the apple. So someone is guiding you. Okay, so there, that's called the supervised. The, the name called supervised. 
So if you go after like unsupervised approaches where there's no uh, supervision coming. So you need to uh, learn the things from it. So in machine learning and data science, you need to learn the, learn, uh, the pattern from the data it's, itself. Like some, some, some of the problems like you know, grouping, clustering type of uh, work. Uh, so that's, we don't know the answer. So the data need to understand uh, in certain ways and come up with like you know, how many clusters you need. There's no one is going to supervise. That's, uh, we have our people are going after what's called unsupervised. So just when you get the problem, that when you get the business problem, think, uh, think about it like uh, whether there's any, any data points or any feature that can help you to understand whether this particular problem is a supervised problem or uh, unsupervised problem. Okay. So maybe uh, people might give you that these are the ground truth values, okay. Based on the experience, uh, you can see like, okay, this is actually Apple, okay. So the, someone is given that that's Apple, okay, one. Okay. So um, you can look at the data set and then see whether there's any information there too. If you don't have it, and then if you look at the problem, uh, you can understand that this okay, this might be unsupervised problem as well. So as I mentioned earlier in, in my slide deck, I showed you a couple of examples like what are the supervised learning and unsupervised learning. So uh, that might help you. Uh, I also see like what are the examples of commonly used algorithms in machine learning. Uh, so some of the machine learning are, are algorithms, um, like uh, if you look at this uh, classification type of problems, you go after like the linear regression, and logistic regression. So if, if the problem is a binary uh, problem, so you it might be better to start with uh, logistic regression too. Um, so where you try to get answer with this, uh, with this yes or no, like it's, it's just a binary value, one or zero. So you might have to work with like multi-class uh, problems as well. Uh, so then uh, random forest, decision trees, and also like XD boost, uh, these type of uh, algorithms are accessing to. Uh, sometimes you also work with some ensemble and algorithms. So not only you use one algorithm to, uh, you, you use like multiple algorithms to solve the same problem. And then let's say, let's say you have uh, Three, three algorithms. Okay, you, you are going to use three algorithms to solve that problem. So the algorithm one give you one particular output, algorithm B will take, give you another output, algorithm C will give you another output as well. So maybe you can take the majority vote as the final output. Okay, so you have three algorithms, all these three algorithms will you, give you uh, some output and then you combine that output to get the, the final, uh, final, final output too. Sometimes some of the simple algorithms might be easy to start to, but if you are heavily working in uh, like the, uh, images data, uh, it's it's good to start with, uh, that's also depend on the data, number of data to work with some of the uh, deep learning uh, techniques. Like many people now, including students, they heavily, you know, targeting this deep learning stuff. We are like, you look into the neural networks. The problem in here is, students most of the time they don't understand what is these features okay someone is actually generating these features using this the neural networks actually so if you want to look at this deep, deep neural networks first thing you need to understand is how many data points we have if we have like very less data points it's really no point you are going after deep, deep neural networks because it it costs a lot so in order to go after this deep neural networks, uh, you need to uh, have a uh, really heavy number of samples, could be millions. So this, before you start to do any deep learning stuff, make sure that you understand why are you going to use deep learning stuff. And uh, it might be worth you spend quite a bit of time to understand these different features. Um, because in deep learning stuff, uh, that's the one area that most of the students uh, are not be able to answer these things. Like, uh, if you ask like, what are the features which actually help to uh, solve this problem with deep learning? It's, it's difficult to say that, okay, the model will say these type of features, but uh, you don't know. So spend some classical, uh, spend some time with classical uh, algorithms as well, support with the machine. 
but spend quite a bit of time understand the maths too. That's what it's going to do. So, uh, Charitma, it's okay if I take a couple of questions here too. Like I can see that. Uh, yes, sir. Someone asking about the business analytics degree. So, if, if you're doing like a business analytics degree, uh, so you mostly work close to the businesses um, uh, compared to the data science team. So, so data science teams and the business teams, they are in a two different worlds. So, that might be another people you need to gap this bridge. So we call, we have translators who actually translate the business problem into data science problem. And also they take some of the data science and they convert into the business problems. So some of the uh, um, courses like, you, know, uh, you do need to understand about the basic stats in terms of the technical things. So, uh, as a business analytics, you should be able to understand, uh, understand the, at least some of the basic stats. In terms of the businesses, it, you need to understand some of the business domains as well. Um, what is the business domain? So if you are heavily working on retail, uh, you need to understand uh, the re re retail domain. So uh, it might be worth to spend some time to understand about the uh, business domains. Uh, most of the time, the data scientists are, they are not spending quite a bit of time on this area. That's, that's one of the lacking in Sri Lankan community, Sri Lanka data science. They, they believe that modeling is the data science. That's, that's not, not the case. If you look at the data science, there's a whole bunch of areas and there's a lot of jobs. Up. Data science, platform engineers, cloud engineers, you know, delivery leads, that's, that's a lot. But business analytics, it's, it's a good area. Yeah, you try to fill the gaps between the data scientists and the business students. Try some of the statistics uh, uh, online courses in Coursera and Udami. Just type some stats. And uh, R is a good language too. So you may have to learn some of the programming languages as well. Uh, R might be a good uh, programming language uh, if you are going to work in business analytics. Uh, look into some of these, these courses as well. So uh, what is the best algorithm for uh, classifications? Uh, like classifications uh, problems are uh, like Asha mentioned earlier, look at the problem and think about like uh, whether it's a binary classification or whether it's a multi-class classification and think about uh, whether you can solve this particular problem just using the linear classification. And just uh, assume that the output is a representation of some input variables in a, in a, in a linear way. Uh, so uh, you can look into some of the uh, linear algorithms, uh, linear classification algorithms. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, logistic regression, you know, you know, random forest, decision tree. And for the sound recognition part, so in here it's quite interesting, like if you want to understand sound, these are um, unstructured data. So you, you are getting like a wave, you know? it's, it's a wave you are getting. So you need to do quite a bit of pitch uh, engineering as well. So sometimes people use with HMI models, uh, uh, in marker chain models to understand uh, uh, some of the digits, for example. So let's, let's assume that you are working with a problem where you wanted to uh, understand the digits. So you can uh, work with some of the models like you know, uh, in marker models. And sometimes you can work with some of the deep learning uh, techniques as well. So, uh, what is the statistician's job uh, other, than, other than analyzing the data in the process of machine? So, this, this, the statisticians, yes, that's, a, that's a one thing that they normally do analyze the data. So they also work with uh, understanding the different groups as well. For example, like uh, if you look at a problem, you might not have the entire entire data. For example, like uh, uh, if you want to solve a, a problem based on the Sri Lankan population, so let's assume we have like 20 million people, you may not have the 
you may not have access to all the data, 20 million people. Okay? You might have only a sample of data points, right? You may have some people in Colombo district, some people in Kandy, some people in, in Anuradhapura or whatever the district. So you might have like a sample of data. So most of the statisticians, they also spend quite a bit of time arguing and uh, analyzing these samples okay? and see whether these particular distributions are good enough to represent the entire populations as well. They work in like causality and, uh, and cause and causality, statistical inferences, and they, these type of work also they, they heavily work on it too. And uh, I mean, with the time, like you know, many statisticians, uh, especially in Sri Lanka, like they move to a field of data science too. Uh, you can see like some of the data scientists are, are coming from stats background as well. So, because it, it's the most, it's an important area for a data scientist. So, so when working in machine learning projects, is git knowledge needed as well. So yeah, so uh, this is one area that I didn't touch it uh, about uh, how you wanted to uh, keep track of the projects, okay? Uh, like you may have to work with the version controllings and uh, kit commitments. So you are working with a team of uh, data scientists. So you may need to uh, understand uh, these, uh, these uh, changes that you work with, with different uh, data scientists in, in your team. So yes, you do need to have to work with the Git. So uh, you do need some uh, uh, Git knowledge experience as well. So it's, it's good, it's, it's pretty much uh, software life cycles. So we do some the agile practices as well. But most of the data scientists, are, they are not uh, peers of 10 years, okay? So as a data scientist, uh, as principal data scientist, I'm not looking for people who are uh, not only, uh, I'm not looking for like you know, peers of 10 years. Okay? That's a different story. You need to have a, some type of sense where you can be a good program with good habits. You need to like properly, uh, Code the your, your, your properly code your code. You make sure you you comment uh, properly. You know you you comment the functions. You understand why you are you you see some of the constraints variables. You need to properly comment those things, and also like make sure you track your your, your experiments whether you are following these type of stuff, and uh, whether you are tracking the model drifting. That's a whole 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 area uh, to you know, work on the complete uh, data science pipeline. But these type of best practices are really important as, as, a, as a data scientist. But not to not to level of uh, software engineering, but at, up to some some level where you are confident, you know, you, you can uh, do you can use these type of uh, practices. Uh, so just. Uh, so if you look at the k-mean clustering, if, if you look at this k-mean cluster, clustering, so we, here basically what you want to do is, so you have uh, some sample of data points, you want to uh, group it, or you want to identify some similar behaviors uh, groups. So here, uh, what you do is so you, you, you come up with the uh, algorithm where you look at the data points and you come up with like how many groups you wanted to have it. Let's say you have three, three, three groups or four groups and identify, uh, identify whether you can group similar data points into one particular group. Okay. So the, all the algorithm and the maths may be a little bit complex, uh, but there are some certain, uh, uh, certain matrices that you need to track it to whether the number three is good enough or not. And also these are like uh, good for the convex problems. So if you have like a non-convex problem, uh, it might be very difficult to solve using that. Uh, uh, so, so how would we select the, which algorithm to use uh, when analyzing that? Can we decide that based on some of the mathematical calculation or we should have hands on experience? Yes, sometimes we do need a hands-on experience, but uh, most of the time uh, we, we play with uh, quite a bit of heavy number of models too. So you play with uh, 
three or four four modules, uh, and then you you come up with the uh, come up with the best model and best algorithm for that particular use case. Sometimes, uh, based on the, some of the experience, you can pick like okay, this is the model you need to go after. So you do need like some experience as well. Right? It comes with experience, and sometimes uh, some of the models like you don't need to have like you know, very heavy machine learning models as well. And some of these statistical models might help you to solve the problem too. Maybe like you might uh, solving a like say forecast model. You can just look at the last uh, in data points, and then you can take the average, and then you can assume that might be the the value for the next day. Maybe like this simple type of intuition. Uh, but uh, you can work on those areas as well. So if you use a pre-trained model with certain accuracy, is there a way to decide that it fits perfectly to the objective? So if you use a, like a pre-trained model uh, heavily in the deep, deep neural networks, so you, you freeze the last layer and then you work with the weights from there and then uh, try to solve the problem. So um, you, you, you need to try it and see. Okay, I mean, like, it might be very difficult to say like, okay, this particular pre-trained model will give you, will you good amount of accuracy and exactly help you to solve the problems uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's practice so what is uh, the reinforcement learning in machine learning uh, it's, it's similar to uh, Yes, assume that uh, you try to learn uh, learn something new. For example, let, let, let's say uh, a small kid is you know, trying to understand fire, for example, right? So you go to the kitchen, so you, then you have, you can see the environment, that's the kitchen. So you, you uh, that's a one factor, right? So the second one is you observe there's something is, 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 is uh, burning. Okay? So the people, so a small kid and you, you touch it. So then once you touch the fire, what happened is uh, he or she is the small kid going to shock, right? or it's going to burn. So what he's going to do is he's going to get a reward. That's the third point in reinforcement. So he's going to get a reward. So this particular reward might be a positive reward or it might be a negative reward as well. So in this particular case, it's, it's a negative reward. So you touch it, you get a, a shock and you get, you get a negative reward. So this, uh, so initially you were, you went to the kitchen. That's basically the environment. Right? You need the observation. You need a reward. So and based on that, uh, you know, like okay, this uh, if you touch it, your hands going to get burned. So, so then you are not going to you know, touch it again. Okay. Uh, so, so, so like that. So most of this is uh, robotics areas. They heavily work on this. Uh, uh, we we want uh, especially like navigational purposes in, in parks and resorts and also in, in shopping malls. Um, that's that's quite a bit of interesting areas too. And uh, they need like computer the techniques of computer vision as well. You know, it's not only robotics. Um, it's, it's a collaboration between many many areas. <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay, Charit, I think uh, we spent quite a bit of time. I hope it's actually uh, help uh, you all. Uh, and then uh, this introduction webinar, hopefully it helped you to understand the ML pipeline and then what, what, uh, what you can do for the uh, master class 1.0. And so this is a simple and simple way of describing this pipeline. Hope you understood that if you have any questions, just shoot me a message to email too. I'm happy to happy to uh, guide you guys. Okay, Charitma, do you have anything else?
yes, sir. I think uh, we have few more questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, how will be career demand for data science in Sri Lanka in future? Yes. So, uh, if you look at the data science uh, demand in Sri Lanka, it's it's now it's going to start to you know uh, grow. I believe I can say like it might be a couple of years behind compared to the, some of the Western countries, but this particular field is going to you know, rapidly grow. It's like an exponential function. It's not a like a linear function. So there are a lot of companies wanted to you know uh, move ahead with uh, data science and machine learning. Uh, areas where you have ample of data points now. You know, um, and also, you have a lot of resources as well to collect this data, like you, uh, online or text analytics data from social media. So you have quite a bit of uh, information. And um, this, is a, this is, a, it's a new area and Sri Lanka actually is going to uh, grow very rapidly. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, if you wanted to be in this particular field, uh, data scientist is not the only only job. Uh, there are some ma many jobs like data 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 engineer. You you need need a data engineer too. Business analytics, data analytics, uh, visualization experts. You know, someone who actually heavily working on this visualization. Sometimes we do need a software engineers as well. If you are heavily working in like a AI type of product type of things, uh, from my experience, data scientists are not the proper proper coders or proper programmers. Not all, um, most of them, because they heavily work on the problem. So you do need some uh, information about the software engineers and also the QA engineers, as I mentioned, AI, art, QA engineers in artificial intelligence. That's another area going to kick off too. In, in Sri Lanka. But uh, yes, this, this, uh, this is a very demanded field. And now like you can see most of the universities, uh, even in the final year students in, even in communication engineering departments, from all the universities, they heavily uh, want to jump into this data science fields. And it's, it's a very competitive uh, domain too, because you are going to compete with the uh, engineers, you are going to compete with the statisticians, and also you might compete with the, uh, some experienced people too, who has uh, some high educations as well. But uh, it's, it's a fun area and you are, you are solving very interesting problems every day. Uh, they're not going to get bored too. And they are not nine to five jobs as well. So you need a, uh, some interests and to solve these uh, problems. Uh, so I'm not, not doing a like a nine to five jobs too. Um, it's, it's always in your mind the problem is you know, keep occurring. Uh, so you need some interest to solve this problem. Yeah, Cherry. Hope, hope that uh, give you quite a bit of information. Uh, yes, I think that's all from uh, our QA session. That's all we don't have. Okay, yeah. thanks. Thanks a lot, Charitma. Yeah. Uh, and uh, everyone, wish you all the best. Okay, so thank you so much uh, for this insightful and productive session. I think we all learn a lot. And thank you so much for sacrificing your valuable time to share your valuable ideas and uh, knowledge with us. So, with that note, yeah. we are going to, with that note, we are going to conclude the very first, first webinar of the introductory webinar series of DataStorm 2.0. But this is not the end. We have two more webinars um, under the DataStorm 2.0. So we would like to invite you all uh, to join, join with us with the webinar we have in tomorrow on key skills you need to foster to become a data scientist. So. Hope to see you tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Good night.